All right, today, glory to the Lord, we're going to try to study the Word of God, which many associate with uh, disagreements and wars and, uh, you know, whatever. But this book brings knowledge, knowledge of the families of the earth and where they come from, and true knowledge of uh, God's Word. Most of all, it brings salvation. It's a book of truth. It may offend some people, but we're just going to read from it. And it's uh, Genesis 36, and it's talking about um, the wives of Esau, who became the kings of Edom. Edom synonymous with uh, Esau, Esau's lineage, and uh, his sons, who dwelt uh, in uh, the Mount Seir. And uh, their descendants. So we're just going to look at that just now. Adam um, has the name meaning red earth, but created from red earth, or Adam. Uh, generally means created from the red earth. Now, Edom just means those who are red, red in color. Their hair is red. Um, and Esau had the characteristics that his full body hair was, uh, was all red, it was completely red. And so this speaks to me in the fact that even though the Messiah came through Jacob's lineage, um, that God still counts, even though it says that God loved Jacob and hated Esau for racial reasons, because he was a different color or because he had red hair, no, um, because he didn't value uh, the birthright that he had. That, that, that was what made God choose Jacob. I mean, Jacob wanted um, to, to have that birthright. And um, he, was, he was not given it, but he, he took it deceitfully. He took it deceitfully. And I still see people trying to do that today. Strangely, we see... A lot of Christians lying to one another so that they can get the best seats in the synagogue or the church so that they can get onto the, the pastor or the, the rabbi's right side. Well, I, I don't believe that um, the deceptions these days which uh, try to propel oneself um, to the so that I say for a leadership role of a church, I think a lot of that is not Bible based, and I think a lot of it is um, just false Christians trying to trying to uh, get ahead. Um, and how do they do that? I'll leave that up to you to guess. But uh, but this is more. Um, I see this more as uh, God really naming. Uh, the lineage of, of, of Esau as Edom because what he's saying is you haven't lost your humanity you're still part of the family of the children of the earth you know from from the lineage of ha, ha Adam and they're referred to as uh, the Edomites which in future yes they have they're going to have some some conflict uh, as it were with Israel which they're already having actually um, so it would be good to know who the descendants of, of Esau actually are. These are the descendants of Esau who is Edom. Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan. Um, some say they're very similar, I'd have said, uh, running about the Middle East. Um, when, when you talk about race, the Bible doesn't describe race as a color. Because remember, uh, Jacob and Esau were brothers. So technically, if you had to look at that in the flesh, you would say they're of the same race. But that's not how the Bible looks at things. The Bible looks at the Bible describes a race as spiritual decisions that you make. Okay, and so the first race within a race is really the ones who valued the things of God against the ones who disvalued the things of God. Now God was saying He still counts Esau as part of the human family. And as it says later on in the Bible, that all the tribes of the earth shall mourn when they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, as, as Yeshua himself said to the Pharisees, and these were Jews, remember. 
quoted that verse, you know, before he went to the cross. He shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. He quoted from Zechariah, um, the book of Zechariah, one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament. Okay, so... So this is what we got to understand, that God does not view the human race as colors. In fact, the Bible does not teach this, even though, even though um, Edom is related to a color, it's a red, a red skin. You could, you, you could be described as red Indians, perhaps, which, which um, is a little bit of a step away from this. But you, you might say that some of the descendants of Esau could be Red Indians, and some could be placed in Africa, some could even be placed in the East, some could be placed in the West. Um, it's referred to Canaan, Ada, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, Ehel Obama, Ehel Obama, uh, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite. I mean, these Semitic languages are very, very similar in pronunciation and meaning. You know, the Hebrew, Aramaic, um, and even Arabic, of course. Very, very similar when this is how, you know, these so-called races branched off. Okay? But remember, they come from the same family. And the human race, as the New Testament says, we are of one blood. We are of actually the same family of, of Adam. If indeed, if indeed that's what you are, human, there's some, 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 some races out there that are not fully human, you know, but I guess, I guess you'll know that, right? We've done so many videos about that. Um, and so these, this is a side note, but these, these races which aren't fully human would love the human races to, to fight against each other and destroy each other. So we've got to be very aware of that, but God, God doesn't want that. And we're just going to, why? Because God is love. You know, this book is truth, but what we must discover out of this truth is that we need the Messiah, whether we're from the line of Jacob or the line of Esau, we need the Messiah to be saved. We need to be born again. This is, this is Christ's message. We've got to understand that very much. If you don't understand that, then you're not really getting what the Bible is really saying. Let's continue. And Bashamath, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nabajoth, and Ada bear to Esau Eliphaz. Eliphaz, I think that is. And Bashamath bear Rel. And Alobima bear Jeush. Jeush. And Jalam. And Korah, these are the sons of Esau, which were born unto him in the land of Canaan. Um, again, some people can speculate of the color of some of these peoples and, and races, but it's very, very obscure because we're talking about five odd thousand years ago. Um, so we can only really speculate. And Esau took his wives and his sons and his daughters and all the persons of his house and his cattle and all his beasts and all his substance which he had got in the land of Canaan and went unto the country from the face of his brother Jacob. For their riches were more than that they might dwell together and the land wherein they were strangers could not bear them because of their cattle. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Um, Sorry, yeah, Esau and Mount Seir, Esau is Edom. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Ada, the wife of Esau, Raul, the son of Bashamath, the wife of Esau. The sons of Elif Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, and Gatam, and Genats. A lot of these names are, uh, you, you could say, um, are related to some tribes in Africa and related to some 
Middle Eastern tribes, even though, of course, the dominant religion now in the Middle East is uh, Islam, which they have a very, very um, limited amount of, of male names to choose from now. Um, you know, as I think it's Mohammed is, is, is the most, uh, obviously the most uh, popular male name just now, because why? They have to name name children after the their so-called prophet, which uh, Jesus was clearly a greater prophet in the Quran than Muhammad, but they, they don't venerate Jesus. Why? I don't know. You have to refer to, you know, Surah 355 for that answer. It has been ignored. A lot of the surahs there have been ignored. But, um, let's continue with this reading. And the sons, um, and sorry, and Tima, uh, was a concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. That's where Amalek came from. These were the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. So we're, we're beginning to see a pattern here. The Amalekites came from uh, the tribe of Esau. Um, also, I've been to certain parts of West Africa where, you know, I've, I've visited towns that's uh, referred to like Tema, Tema, these type of places, quite common um, there. And these are the sons of Raul, Nahath and Zerah, Shama, which is a very Hebrew name, and Miz Miza. These were the sons of ba Bashamath, Esau's wife. So actually, they're very, 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 very uh, spiritual names that uh, his sons, Esau's sons, were given there. Shama is a, is a Hebrew word meaning the closeness and and the very closeness and proximity to God. Um, even like the word Shema is like come close to listen. Shama is like uh, the, the very closeness of the presence of, of, of God. And these were the sons of Adolob, Adolobama, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion, Esau's wife, and she bare to Esau Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the dukes of the sons of Esau, the sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn son of Esau, Duke Teman, Duke Omar, Omar is a very, very popular African name. Um, Duke Zepho, Duke Kenas, Duke Korah, Duke uh, Gatam, and Duke Amalek. And so, um, a duke is a sort of a prince. And again, it's quite common in certain African tribes to call their children prince such and such. We, we, it's, not, it's not a culture in Europe, it's very much, um, it's not commonly done in Africa, but it's, we know that it is done in Africa, and this is how uh, the children were named. These are the dukes that came um, of Eliphaz in the land of Edom, these were the sons of Ada, uh, and these are the sons of Raul, Esau's son, Duke nah Nahath, Duke Zerah, Duke Shama, Duke Meza, these are the dukes that came of Ruel in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Bashamath, Esau's wife. You know, just basically noting the fact that, um, you know, Esau was used to destroy Nimrod. Um, and this is what we're talking about. The pagan feasts really come from Nimrod. The mother and child worship comes from Nimrod. And yet, uh, even though it says... You know, God loved Jacob, hated Esau. I believe that God is still saying here, these these are still part of the human family. Yeah, they made, he made some wrong decisions, Esau, and yet God could still use them. They're still part of the tribes of the earth. And now we all have a chance, now we're all on level ground, looking at how Yeshua rebuked the Pharisees and many of the, many of the hypocritical, unbelieving Jews. And... Um, Really, the Lord just says, look, we're on a level playing field now. You know, God used certain people to bring forth His Son to the world. Yeshua is the present to the world. He's the Messiah. 
He's the, he's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Um, he's the one to come, the one who was before Abraham. I am the one who was, going all the way back to the before the creation of the earth. The one who is, um, who battled Satan through through what he, through his ministry, and also giving of himself on the cross for our sin, and rising from the dead. And the one who was to come is going to certainly rule the earth for, from the new Jerusalem at some point in the in the near near future, very near future I would say. Um, again, you know, referring to Zechariah 14, um, the tribes of the earth shall mourn. Make sure that you're a spiritual Jews. We've been looking at this is what Paul the apostle taught both to the Jews, the carnal Jews, who needed to become spiritual Jews, and to the Gentiles, which uh, the Edomites would be counted as Gentiles, who also needed to be translated, transformed into spiritual Jews through the acceptings, through the acceptance of, of Yeshua. Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, you know, um, I'm a sinner. I need a saviour. Um, who is the Jewish Messiah? Can I approach him with grace? Maybe he'll forgive me. Maybe he'll give me a new start. And I believe the human race, through Yeshua, 2,000 years ago, been given a new start. Now this, the Old Testament, can, can breed a lot of racism. Can, can, uh, uh, this, is, this is not my intention going through this passage. But it is my intention to focus on, if I'm reading about the Jews, the Pharisees, the Edomites, so it's something very wrong with the human race. We fall short of the glory of God and the Bible itself testifies we all need a Messiah, including the Jews. The Jews, the first ones to accept Yeshua and perhaps they'll be the last ones to accept Yeshua after the, the dispensation, if you like, of the Gentiles is fulfilled. That's not to say I'm not a dispensationalist, but yes, there is dispensations within Scripture, but... Um, when we become one with God, you realize that um, the dispensations were only to bring you in to the knowledge of God himself. Hallelujah. And once we're born again, you know, we believe this book from beginning to end. This is the word of God. Yes, this is the word of God. You know, like Noah's day had to build an ark. Jesus is our ark today that we run to um, to get saved. Hallelujah. Which even he was during Noah's day as well. That's the argument. This is the argument about dispensations, which I've made a few videos about. But truly, um, you cannot come to the Father but through the Son. And so, even the fact that God spoke to Noah to make an ark, I believe that Noah had to come through Yeshua first that Yeshua is the living word of God, the testament of the living word that is breathed to his creation. And so when Noah heard from God, he was really hearing from the Messiah himself. Again, again there's uh, debates you could say about dispensations. I'm not a dispensationalist. I believe that every single patriarch in this book has been saved through the Messiah. Whether, you know, uh, hearing from him in the Old Testament, and then believing on him for the promises to come, which even he, he gave his own son, of course, Yeshua, to die on the cross. And so, as it says in that, I believe it's Hebrews, at, it's not Hebrews 4, I think it is, where it talks about, um, it, basically, uh, it basically talks about that these hearers died, you know, before the promise was made, but in... And, and the shadow picture of, as, as the Apostle Paul describes, of these feasts and, and promises that was fulfilled on the cross at Calvary. And in hindsight, we're the ones that can uh, just run to God and, and thank Him for what He did on the cross. And there's still people who disbelieve it. There's still atheists that will try to say that it didn't happen, but there's more than enough evidence that, that in fact it happened. Yes, there's more than enough evidence for any rational mind to, to say, yes, Yeshua lived and died and rose again, just as the Bible says. <clears throat> um, 
sons of Esau who is Edom, and these are their dukes. These are the sons of Seir the Horite, who inhabited the land Lotan and Shobal and Zebeon and Anna. Anna is a very interesting name. Anna is really more akin to uh, further north of uh, Israel, towards Russia perhaps, run about there. But uh, again, I've, I've known names in, in Africa to, to be that as well. I mean, because the truth is that Africa has got more of a mix of, of races and peoples than any other continent on earth. So you got to just take note of that. Um, yes, I've made videos. The fact that I've quoted that the Akans are coming from the, the lineages of, of the Amalekites. But um, we'll look at that. We, we, we'll see what the Bible says. We'll see if it's true. Already we're seeing that um, part of Esau's family were in fact the Malachites. So we'll keep reading. And Dishon and Ezar, the Dishan, and these are the dukes of the Horites, the children of Seir in the land of Edom. And the children of Lotan were Hori, Hemam, and Lotan's sister was Tim Timna. And the children of Shobal were these Alvan and Manath and Ebal, Shipo, Onam. And these are the children of Zeb Zibion, both Aja, Anna, and this was that Anna that found the mules in the wilderness as he fed the asses of Zibion, his father. And the children of Anna were these Dishon, Aholibama, the daughter of Anna, and these are the children of Dishon, Hemdan, and Ishban, Ithran, and Keran. The children of Ezar are these Bilan, and Zivan, and Akan. Okay, Akan is what we what we um, know today as the, 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 the tribes of West Africa. The Akans were said to really immigrate, they were quite a nomadic people, and they came from this region to West Africa. They've been in West Africa for several thousand years. Uh, and it continues, us, Aran, and so on. Okay. Um, we're just going to stop there because what we've actually gotten um, from uh, Genesis chapter 36, verse 1 to 27, we found out that the, Amal Amalek, the Amalekites... Um, came from Timna, who was the concubine, and then she's uh, mentioned later on here, and further down we're seeing that the children of Ezar, which is a relation, um, produced Akan, the son called Akan, and we got the, the Akan tribes in West Africa, very many of them. Um, at least half a dozen of them, probably more towards about a dozen of them, all Akan tribes um, in West Africa. So the Bible itself proves that um, what I'm saying is, tr is true. Yeah, I've made videos about it. Um, yeah, I've been called many names, you know, as if I'm making it up, but why is it then that um, 300 million or so, let's say a quarter of a billion people can say the exact same thing as I'm saying and not get called racist and yet I'm only just, uh, I've, I stayed in West Africa for about two years you know I was taught this in West Africa and so I find it in the Bible you know I've spoken to chiefs there um, they're quite open with this knowledge and it's not as if like the, the so called white man came and taught this not at all um, when the white man came, uh, he's very limited in his power. Uh, and what, what was the currency at that time was money. Gold, silver, uh, riches. That, that, that is what um, the, the, the African or the West African people really liked about the Europeans. The fact that they carried a lot of treasure, they, they had some form of technology, they were able to make these gold coins, they were able to make this, you know, diamond bracelets and so on, and they were very interested in this. And this is how, you know, the 
sadly the slave trade started. But when the Christians heard about this, they said, no, hold on. You know, we're Christians. We know that our Bible, you know, yes, it does talk about the, you know, the Akans being from, from Esau and all of that, which I just read out. But, but in fact, they're human beings. In fact, God loves these people. In fact, why don't we educate them about the Messiah, about, about Jesus Christ? And there was this debate that happened within, within the Christian church at that time. Should they go out, known as the, fi the final frontier, Africa, to, to uh, educate about the Word of God? Because they, they didn't have Bibles, even though the word academia comes from West Africa. And they were some of the most educated people on earth. And at the moment, West Africa is the fastest growing population on planet Earth today. And so you've got to look at that and say, okay, how can you blame the white man for um, being the Canaanites, for being Amalekites, for being Philistines, for being absolutely everything negative in the Bible, in which, uh, the, the, you know, the... You know, the, the black Hebrew Israelites from America try to say that, listen, uh, the enemy of mankind is actually the white man. You know, you know they're trying to give, give tribal names to China, to Japan, to the Red Indians, to um, even Southern Europeans. You know, um, Hispanics, which are Southern Europeans, even to them they'll say, yeah, you, 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 you give you a tribe as well, but these white people from, from Europe, and that's that's very racist and it's wrong. It's not, it's not akin to biblical, what you might call, the fact that yes, God, um, in His Word, separated the peoples of the earth not through color, but through their choices about serving God, and these Christians in Europe, mostly Britain. And, and sometimes Germany as well, the Germans were involved in it, and other European so-called uh, countries decided they wanted to go out and tell uh, these West Africans about their Messiah. About their Messiah. And so equally, there was information gathered, the fact that um, uh, the Ashantis and the Fantis and all them, they're Akan tribes. They're from the people of Akan in Genesis 36. Now, whether they were originally that colour, I don't know. Like several thousand years ago, if you're going back to, to that period, four or five thousand years ago, um, well, it'd be very, very difficult to, uh, to say, well, they were all black or they were all red or they were all this certain colour. It seems to suggest they had, they had a reddish tint to their, their colour um, and, and they were known for this. I've been to Africa, I've seen people with uh, reddish tints to their hair, um, I've seen it. And so, it's the same, I guess, no matter where you go on earth, there's many, many of them in, in Europe as well. Um, so, this could be a characteristic. But the main characteristic of Esau was the fact they had a lot of body hair. And that's the same in many places you go in the world today. But uh, what we have, according to this, is, is the Akan tribe. Um, and obviously, uh, the Akans intermarried to different peoples and different other tribes of the earth as well. Um, yes, you've got the Amalekites coming from Esau as well. And so that doesn't mean to say the Amalekites are exclusively from West Africa. But it, yes, it does suggest that these migratory people um, did go right throughout um, Africa, they, they went right throughout there, and as I said, there's the biggest amount of people groups within Africa. You know, you could get people in Africa living next door to each other with completely different lineages, completely different types of gene pools, and therefore, um, they're going to have different reactions to this book, to what this book says. Some are going to put up a real fight and, and try and say, well, we're not from this uh, line, we're not from this tribe, that's fine. Some will say, yes, we are, and they'll actually put up a fight to the fact that, no, this is our ancestry. They'll actually fight and say, look, we, we are part of this group. You know, that's fine. But the, the point is that the Bible, yes, it talks about the peoples of the earth and where, where we're all from. 
and sometimes it's quite a not a, not a great thing to find out you know that your ancestors are not what you think they were but this is why we have the New Testament so that we can um, repent to Yeshua so that we can find true love and, and repentance and true family within Yeshua himself and the fact that if we're in Yeshua then we're going to bless the other peoples of the earth because it says the Abrahamic blessing was to bless everyone, to bless the peoples of the earth. It's not, it's not a me first thing. It's not if, if you're a Jew, then you're the, you're the peak of the pyramid. That's not how God king, God's kingdom actually works at all. There's two, as I've said before, there's two forms of management. There's the pyramid management and there's the grassroots one. Yeshua very much taught the grassroots one from the ground up and the fact that what he can do he wants to give you the power to do it as well no matter what tribe of, of the earth you're from especially if you're from a Adamic tribe which Edom is an Adamic tribe so, so is Jacob so is Israel the fact is that um, the Nephilim races which are not fully human Yes, interbred with um, the Israelites, interbred with the Danites, interbred with, um, what would you say, yes, some of these, these other tribes of the earth. The Canaanites were very, very much known for it. And even the tribe of Ephraim, it has to be said, were known for it as well. And that's why they lost their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. They actually lost their names within the biblical canon when we read Revelation chapter 14, Dan and Ephraim are not mentioned because they're very much noted for interbreeding with the Nephilim tribes. And that's not to say they all did that. Yes, I've seen that the Celts did that, but that's not to say all the, the, the Scots are a Celtic tribe. No, most of the Scots were Christian. Most of the Scots were Christian. Just like any other, you know, Anglo-Saxon tribes did it. But most of the Anglo-Saxons are human. They're, they're from, from their men in the likeness of God. Okay? And so it's very important to, to realize this. You know, uh, Satan will try to use these truths to, to separate people or, or to, um, I don't know, to say that maybe God hates you. It's not, it's not true. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So loved the world, including the Edomites, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Now, I do not deny that there's real spiritual Jews who are of African descent. I cannot, I cannot deny that. There are spiritual Jews from African descent. To say that there are some physical Jews of African descent, maybe there, maybe there is, but they're not saved. They have, they have to be born again. They have to become spiritual Jews, just like the Jews in, in the Middle East. Who some say are from the tribe of Dan. Some say they're from they're fake Jews. Okay, let's say they are fake Jews, but are, are they still human beings? Um, do, do they still um, breathe the same air as you? Do they still um, walk the same earth as you do? Do they still face the same problems as you do every day? Yeah, of course they do, and more of course. There's a lot more problems of staying out in Israel than most of the countries these days. And so you got to say, yes, God loves the Jews in Israel as well as he loves the um, Edomites, as well as he loves the Europeans, as well as he loves the Africans, but in such a way is that he wants us to be saved in such a way that you know God is looking at us knowing our need knowing the fact that we're in bondage to Satan knowing knowing the fact that Satan is, is, is really um, playing with the nations and playing with scripture and the people are div dividing themselves one to another as happened in the days of Noah we, we don't we don't want that to happen as true believers if you're truly in the Messiah you're going to be used as a blessing to every tribe and nation of the world and I believe this is why God raised up the British Empire at one time even though it's very very unpopular to talk about the British Empire 
through that came a lot of knowledge of, of scripture, came a lot of missionaries, came a lot of people who educated other um, kindreds and tongues and nations and dare I say even races. Although, although God doesn't see us as a colour, races are defined as, as not necessarily as a colour in, in scripture but as, as, a, as a set of decisions that we make along the way that turns our people into a certain race and at the moment at the moment my friends the nations are making a terrible mistake in uh, allowing things like gay marriage allowing things like uh, same-sex same unions allowing things which go contrary to this book which are very strongly against the Word of God which are referred to as abominations according to the Word of God does that mean to say that God hates sodomites? God loves you, especially sodomites, and the fact that he wants you to repent of your sin, and the fact that he, he wants you to give up your sin, he wants you to stop loving the things of the flesh, you know, as, as Esau was akin to doing, Esau was very much a man of, uh, a man's man, as it were, and um, we're not told about the many nefarious activities that Esau got up to, I'm not, I'm not certain. In fact, I don't think that one of the sins would have been uh, sodomy that Esau was involved with. We're, we're not told that. We, we, the Bible doesn't record that. And so, why did why did God hate Esau? It was because he rejected his birthright. He rejected the very things of God in his life, and that's what really turns God against. Um, a, a set of people. If people have a chance to get right with God, if people are given opportunities to get right with God, if people are shown their sin and the fact that how, how vile it is to be self-indulgent and be of the things of the flesh, um, some, some of us can't help it sometimes. We're, all of us are sinners and fallen short of the glory of God. But out of this God wants us to learn that um, through these temporal sins, Satan can really get in the way of, of, of God's plan through these temporal sins it can really spoil the plan of God for your life and my life and if everybody, if a nation starts to indulge in these things there's going to come a time that God's wrath is going to be poured out and we're going to discover that Sodom and Gomorrah was not just a fictional tale but it's real it's a real thing, it's a real, a real issue that has to be addressed very very much in this world that we live in today because um, what can I say that it's, it's the type of sin that's, that's akin to uh, in the book of Isaiah is eating swine flesh it's, it's just mind blowing how many Christians eat swine flesh and they love it as well in fact even, there's even some Muslims that, that convert to Christianity so that they can eat pork but the Bible itself condemns, condemns eating pork. And yet most of my Christian peers will tuck into a piece of bacon, a piece of pork, and say, ah, Paul, uh, sorry, Peter had the vision that you can eat anything. When, it, when in fact the vision itself, when you read it, and you read the whole entire chapter and verse in the book of Acts, it doesn't mean that. The, all the apostles or Peter didn't sit down and tuck into a nice... Uh, pig, you know, bacon, bacon sandwich, they never had a bacon, bacon sandwich, it's not what the Bible says, it's just talking about spiritual things, the, 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 you know, when you read the Bible, if, if, if you're not akin to the word of God, the things of the kingdom of God, you're never going to really get its meaning, you're always going to twist the meaning, you're always going to read it, and you're always going to get something else out of it, other than what the truth is, you know, this is why, um, well, basically, that uh, Satan really hates this book. But at the same time, Satan can use the Bible in order to uh, to deceive people into hating God and hating the things of God and hating each other. It's almost like this. It's almost like um, when you look in the mirror and the Bible testifies to this, what do you see? In the Bible it says, 
what a man is in his mind, that's what he is. When you look at yourself in the mirror, do you, do you think that you're, uh, do you look at yourself in the flesh? Do you look at your, the way your hair is? Do you look, I mean, I'm not saying to, to, to stop. There's a level of vanity I think that's um, acceptable. Some of my videos, I clearly don't care how I look. If you look at some of my first videos on this channel, I make the point that the, I used to I used to get people writing in regularly. Oh, you know, please uh, pay a bit more attention to your appearance. You know, and they, they're not getting the fact that I'm, I'm deliberately not. You know, giving credence to my appearance because I'm trying to speak spiritual truths. I'm trying to speak the things of God. You know, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you know that which. Um, is in a man's mind that's what he is that's that's in the book of Proverbs and so will you look at yourself if you discover that you're from um, the lineage of, of Esau is, is that what you're going to be are you going to be a new creature in Christ you know if you study the scriptures you discover that yeah you, you, you could actually be from one of the tribes of Israel that's awesome but you got to get that um, confirmed through the Holy Spirit you got to allow God to actually designate to you a tribe you got to get it confirmed, in other words, through through the Holy Spirit. You can't just say you're of a certain color and call yourself a certain tribe of Israel because the Bible doesn't teach that. The Word of God doesn't teach this. If it just said that Israel were black, awesome. You still need to be born again, though. But white doesn't say that. It says that the races of the earth, you know, they all spread out. All, the races of the earth, which happened very early on in Genesis, and then they spread out and intermingled and intermarried with, with the entire earth. So you're, going, you're, you're getting a very, very mixed, mixed bag now. Especially now, the fact that we have, um, you know, the the travel the way it is in the world. People are migrating to any part of the world they choose to live in, and so we're having having a time where uh, humanity is really intermarrying like like never before, perhaps. Which may be a good thing and a bad thing. It might, it might be quite hard to begin with to adjust to the different cultures. But what you got to understand is that, you know, when you're born again, you're really taking on the culture of Israel. You're a spiritual Jew. Well, no matter what colour you are, you got to understand that in your head. you got to get, get that right in your head. You're now a spiritual Jew. I'm not trying to be, to be a physical Jew. I'm, I know I'm not from, from a Jewish lineage. Now, I could be from an Israelite lineage, but that's up to God to reveal that to me. I can't just choose a tribe that I want to be affiliated with. God will give me um, a, a tribe, and as long as I'm walking with Yeshua, then He's going to use me. He's going to educate me. He's going to um, use me to bless the people of the earth and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And I hope that is also your view of, of what true Christianity is. And... Um, just get it in perspective. If we don't have Jesus Christ, we don't have love, we don't have the knowledge of God, we don't have the truth. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching the videos, guys. Salute you all out there, no matter what race you're from, color kindred. The Lord bless you.